So you might remember from about 12 months ago, I put together this uh, box with three of these Amley cycle timers in and um, discovered after six months that uh, they really didn't have the guts to run this big yellow pump. So I've been replacing them with uh, these Punai brand things and uh, none of them are much good. So I'm going to replace the lot of this with something else. I've got an alternative idea. thought we'd uh, have a look at these cycle timers. So these are the ANLY cycle timers that I started off with and these are the ones I made a video on building my relay timer box thing. Um, but I did find that these are terribly terribly unreliable and I think I mentioned in that video that the uh, quality on these was uh, particularly low. In fact this knob has got a flat bladed screw hole and this one here has got a hex key instead but I'll probably be able to wodge it off with an inappropriate tool yeah. and then I'll just pull this apart now the first time I opened these up I was uh, very unimpressed by this because uh, this really didn't look like a well made item at all there we go. so inside here here we are we've got Chunky little transformer hooked onto the mains. Actually, we can. Oh no, it is screwed together. And that's just running through a little. There we are. Four diodes and a capacitor to smooth it. So they're just dropping that down to some low voltage to actually supply the electronics on here. And then over on the electronics side, we've got a little counter timer chip um, and the relay that switches things on and off. And this relay is rated at, I think it was 7 amps. Um, and although technically my pump is 825 watts, I think, which is about 5 amps or so, because it's an inductive load, it gives a big kick when it switches on, and these modules kept dying. So, having killed a bunch of those, I then discovered these modules for about the same price, which have the nice ability that you can say whether it's timing in hours, minutes, tenths of an hour, seconds, how long you want it on, it's got LEDs that show you what's going on, and these seemed a little bit better. These are Punai brand, P-U-N-A-I. But these started dying after quite a short time as well. In fact, this one's falling to pieces. And if you can see in here, all these yellow wires are rather blackened. And that's because at some point they've uh, decided they can do this circuit a bit cheaper. Missed out a bunch of components, voltage regulators, resistors, things like that. And just put in this one big resistor here which of course cooks itself slowly over the course of a few months and um, blackens the wiring at the same time and again I've been killing the relay modules on these so having killed a couple of them and a couple of them I found <coughs> these rather nice looking one made by a manufacturer I've actually heard of Omron and they've got a nice cover on them and they um, show the countdown as they're counting down between states and again these let you do seconds, minutes, hours, tenths of a second if I can actually press the button so on and so forth um, so up to 99 hours as a maximum or 9.9 tenths of an hour 99 tenths of an hour or you know anything you want so they seem quite a good option and to avoid burning out the relays again I've got these much more substantial relays that I've had kicking around for well over a decade. So on to the enclosure. Um, these relays all sit on these relay bases and this particular clever shape here is called a DIN rail system which is 37 mil across. So I started off cutting out bits of plastic to try and do my DIN rail, cutting out, printing off bits of plastic to do my DIN rail system. So that was my first attempt and uh, obviously I forgot that it's got feet in the middle. Um, so I modified that and came back, made this one and realised that we can't get past the corner there. Attempt three, we actually get something that works properly. So I can now snap my relay modules into place like so. Here we are, this was my first attempt at something to 
actually let me position components properly. This is just a very quick mock-up I made. I put mounting points on the side for the socket. Um, but anyway, I discovered with this one that actually I didn't leave enough clearance inside for this relay. Um, I didn't like the way the socket's there, there's few of the problems. When I was printing it, this overhang here is too big. I wasn't happy with the print quality over there, and uh, my base didn't actually fit together. So it was time for a redesign. Um, I changed the way we screw things together, so it's just these little screw holes on the bottom that line up. I lost the outer perimeter, moved the DIN rail off centre, and now have this Patris box sitting recessed in the front. And that wasn't bad, but there was a problem that this was too tall. And when I plugged this relay module in, it didn't actually reach quite down to the bottom. So this is version 3 of the design, which is um, significantly improved again. Um, I came up with this. I rather, I'm rather pleased with this. This lets me do the nice curve on the inside down here, but have something that will print without support material, and that keeps it nice and stable. The problem I had with this was I had now made it too short, and when plugging in this module, it actually sat proud round about there. So, here is version 4, which is pretty much flawless in every way, and this is all printed without support. There's a little rough edge on the inside there, because we print this way up. But other than that, we've got a very clean looking print there, and um, I might as well assemble this while we're waiting. this all fits together properly. This is the first time I've tried to fit it all together. It's going to be a bit tight the first time it goes in. There we go. And so here we are with all the screws in and then Really quite pleased with the fit on this one. Sacrificed an old IEC cable once again and uh, wired all this up. I'm not going to explain the wiring. Needless to say, there's actually wiring diagrams on each of these components on how they connect up. So if you're smart enough to work that out, you're smart enough to work out how to kill yourself and you don't need me to tell you. Um, things that are obviously wrong with this, this PLA plastic melts or becomes soft and squishy at a surprisingly low temperature so that might give me problems in the summertime. Um, yeah I should probably have crimped connections in there and um, I don't know how much well I know that's three watts of heat as an absolute maximum when it's got its coils energized but I, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with heat inside this enclosure. So I'm going to plug in my modules now and um, see if everything actually works before I put it all in its enclosure. Looks like it's uh, working properly. You can see the relay contacts moving. Well, I'd say we can call that a success. I'm really quite pleased with the way that turned out. And of course, now I can easily knock out a couple more if I want. Typically, I probably never will. But I've got all my designs saved away, so it's now an easy project to reproduce. And it should be uh, pretty much about IP54 splash proof and uh, not going to get too wet inside there. So, yeah, very good. Now I can plant my onions. No leaks. Mm. You're impressed, aren't you? Finally time for me to plant these onions. Now that I've got my new timer all working, I can replace the old one. Put 
kept failing. So, let's get things underway and um, get some water in this. I've scooped out a whole bucket full of the uh, clay pebbles from this bed just so I can check the water level when I'm running the pumps. And I'm going to work out now what timing we actually need to keep these beds topped up. I seem to remember it was something like 18 seconds of the pump running every 12 hours so I'm just going to have a little play now. Okay, so here we go with 25 seconds of pump time. Should be sufficient clarity. Rising up, 12 seconds more to go. Certainly looking pretty good. Certainly plenty of water in both of those now. Three, two, one. And we're away. So 25 seconds looks pretty good to me. So I'm printing these a bit more spaced apart than I did last year, or I think I am, because um, last year the onions just got so big there literally wasn't room for more of them. And uh, if they grow the same size as they grew last year, then this bed is going to be totally full. So what's that, 14 onions, and I'll do the same in that bed as well. Hopefully they'll all grow. In case any of you were wondering why I'm using those clunky old relay modules rather than uh, nice shiny solid state relays and microprocessors and OLED displays and things like that. Well, I did start off down that route and I had the lure interpreter on here and it kept on crashing with out of memory. I'd get a bit of code working, I'd try and add another bit and it'd say out of memory and crash. But I discovered late last night that the Arduino IDE now supports these Node MCU boards as well. So um, I've started working on an Arduino implementation of this and I want to do uh, temperature for the nutrient tanks so I don't turn the pumps on if it's freezing and I'm going to use this little air pressure sensor and try and get it to measure water depth as well so that if the tanks are running low I can again disable the pump and because this is all Wi-Fi enabled it means I can log all the statistics back to a copy of graphite running on a computer somewhere in my house so I was working on that till about 2am last night and then I decided I should probably go to bed instead but um, maybe it'll get finished, maybe it won't, we'll see. The holiday's quickly running out. So I wasn't entirely happy about using the PLA plastic for these things because it does soften at a low temperature. So I got hold of some grey ABS plastic instead which will hopefully match the grey of the sockets and um, started printing some out in that and the print quality's not as good as it was with the PLA. I've had all sorts of problems getting the ABS to print without curling up. And this is the best one I've had so far, so you can still see there's a distinctive curve on all of these sides because the corners have lifted off as it was printing. But um, it is at least usable, so I'm going to print myself three more of those off and um, finish doing my timers. Anyway, thanks for joining me today folks and uh, hope you enjoyed this one and see you next time. Cheers!